Hey everyone, this video is going to be about the differences between pro bono work and doing work for free. So um, let's start at the beginning and talk about what I mean by pro bono work. For example, right now I'm working on impactnigeria.org and we're not hoping to make any money off this project, right? This is a project that I went out and found strictly so I could get better at basically building like greenfield applications starting some from scratch um implementing the front end implementing the back end you know having time to fail and figure things out without being at work in an agile environment where we might be doing sprints or you know we might have some type of combine flow but ultimately at work you know you need to produce results so that is the the key defining um trait i would say of pro bono work right um can you fail <laughs> right <laughs> obviously if you're interning for a startup and you're not getting paid or you're working for sweat equity for a startup um still you can't really fail um and let's talk about why these pro bono projects are going to be important for you and your career now don't get me wrong a pro bono project could be your own personal projects that you create but i think that the best pro bono projects are the ones that um either encourage or force you to collaborate with people so that is ultimately why i like impact nigeria because i do have a product manager and we do have a designer i just get to code right I get to work on those skills. I get to, um, you know, take the the little failures from my freelance work or from my part time job. And basically now I have a playground that I can come and, you know, kind of do whatever you want, which um, is is very um, rewarding in and of itself. So if you're working for free. Uh, remember, <laughs> if you're working for free, you'll probably find yourself getting upset with uh, not making money or spending too much time on it. But if you're doing a pro bono project, it should almost feel cathartic, right? Like your pro bono projects that you do either for yourself or for other people should feel good. You know, this is this is your way to balance the scale, right? When you're at work all the time. You have to produce results. Um, you don't really have too many chances to fail, even if you're in a really good work environment. Like you, you won't be around long if you're just at work fucking things up, period. Um, so these these pro bono projects are important. And a lot of people will say, oh, go and do open source work. I think that's a stupid fucking idea for a lot of reasons. The main reason, oops, sorry. The main reason being that contributing to open source is not easy for everyone and um a lot of people like me <laughs> you know we we aren't really used to coding at a low level um if you're coming out of coding boot camp or if you're a self-taught developer and you know when you are talking about contributing to open source this is code that is you know it has to be production level code that the world is gonna see and um you not everyone has the fortitude for that. Not everyone has the interest for that. Not to mention that it's hard to find an open source project that needs contributors that you're interested in, that you actually have the skill set to contribute to. That could take anywhere from a couple weeks to, you know, a few months. So I think the best pro bono projects probably would come from like a meetup, you know, come to Technologists of Color meetups and ask to work on 100blackdevs.com or you know, um, go to meetups that you just get to go and basically do kind of like workshop style things where you just go to the meetup for two or three hours and y'all make stuff. Those are the types of projects that are going to keep you moving forward in your career long term. Right. You don't just want to be out here just doing free work for anyone that'll ask, because when people find out that you'll do work for free, they'll keep asking you. So. Um, I want to be fully transparent with what I'm telling you here. So let's go down the list of things that I do for free. Um, right now, um, in discussions with, I think it's like openclassvisa.com or something, but basically they were in a free boot camp. They are seeking funding, but right now 
their their curriculum is 100 percent free to all of their students. And the reason that I volunteered my time to do this is because everyone else is also working for free and we're not necessarily expecting to make money out of this. Right. The best way to solidify um, all of these foundational concepts as a developer is to go out and teach or go out and speak. So that's what I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to become, you know, a better interviewer. I'm going to become better at my craft because I'm going to have to explain these things to real students. And um, the other uh, pro bono project that I'm working on is Impact Nigeria, which I talked about earlier. Now, I actually was lucky enough to go through um, a program called CoLab. And basically, they paired, you know, product managers and designers with developers. So I got to just write code. You know, one of the biggest problems um, that I have right now is that I'm not fast enough. You know, at my internship, I could barely keep up with everything that was going on in coding boot camp. I could barely keep up with everything that was going on. So those are the types of things that you want to work out with these projects. There has to be some type of strategy behind what you're doing. You can't just go out into the world and just start whipping out whipping out little apps, whipping out to-do lists, whipping out, you know, grocery list apps, things of that nature. That's really good, but eventually you're going to plateau. And um, when you collaborate with other people on these pro bono projects, you're going to be pushed in unique and um, distinct ways that will mimic a real day at work a lot more than if you just say, oh, I'm just going to go follow some tutorial or I'm just going to make an app that I want. You know, I'm not thinking about <laughs> what the users might want or I'm not thinking about the design because I'm not a designer. I'm a developer. You know, you don't you you don't want to um, invest, you know, too much time into projects like that over the course of your entire career, because it's not a realistic representation of what you'll be doing. You'll always probably be working with a team, whether it's small or large. You'll always um, run into issues that are unique and contextual to your team who you're working with and what y'all are trying to do. So um, let's wrap this up. In conclusion, if, <laughs> if you're trying to get paid or if you're doing something with the hopes of getting paid, you're probably not doing pro bono work, right? If you're getting a real opportunity to challenge yourself to improve your skills you probably are doing pro bono work. The value of pro bono work is to bridge the gaps, right? If you're unemployed right now, you need to be bridging the gap with the experience that you're missing out on every day. So you should probably be going to meetups, finding a long term project to collaborate on. For instance, you could try Code for America. They have chapters all over the United States. Um, I'm not sure about globally, you know, if you're outside of the states where you could find a, a similar organization like that but i'm sure there's similar organizations um, wherever you live but yes find these uh long-term pro bono projects that you can work on that will really build your skills that you can really talk about in depth at interviews and you know at meetups and online and um yeah i hope that i've given y'all like clear distinctions i hope that i've given y'all <laughs> good good explanations of why this stuff is important and most importantly i hope that i've encouraged you all to go out into the world and you know get some <clears throat> get one or two long-term pro bono projects under your belt get out there get some projects that you can show ownership of that you can take full accountability of that you can take responsibility of you know that is the ultimate goal if we are not employed that should be our primary goal. We should be finding, you know, basically a team to work with. So with that being said, I'm going to end this video. <clears throat> I know it's kind of riffing off there. Let me know what you think. Let me know uh, what else you would like me to talk about in the future. And I'll see you soon.